Oh god, I'm not ready for this one. I am so sorry in, av in advance, it's cringe. I just love him a lot, okay? Don't burn my house down. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, today we... Uh, oh god, I really can't do this, this is so embarrassing. Hi, <laughs> okay. Today we talk about Katsuki Bakugo. At this point in the channel, I've created five thumbnails illustrations from Boku no Hero Academia. Surprising, isn't it? I'm shook that I'm making so much content for them, not gonna lie. Then again, it's client work and they get a say on what I make for our extended collab. But, um, not gonna lie, I don't even know where to begin talking about my ultimate husband. Like, I don't wanna sound crazy, but god, I love Bakugo so damn much, it's insane. And quite frankly, Bakugo is the only reason why I even started watching Boku no Hero. Normally, I don't really care for superhero stuff in the media, like it has never been a topic or concept I gravitate towards in the first place ever since I was little. But um, before I jump into that topic, let's talk about the thumbnail first. Let me get my professionalism out of the way and practice doing an artist talk and speak about the work you guys are seeing first. Then afterwards you can just mute me and I can just go ipshit fangirling over caramel over here. So, first of all, let me be honest, this one was a difficult one to produce. The initial sketch with the original idea didn't feel Bakugo enough, you know? Like, in the process of initially talking about the original idea, it was a bit confusing on the vision of it. I did try to get closer to the original idea, but something about it just looked off. So, I did the brave move of doing an alternate version that was more in line of, um, what, character and feel of the, of Baku will be like, and presented it to the client. They definitely vibe more with it, so I would work the entire drawing for them. Having Bobby Kuhn model for me actually helps a lot. I'm actually glad I spent a good amount of money for the knockoff of body cone and body chance because it really helped me visualize their perspective and proportions better. Like it's sort of a shortcut for sketching humans and all. And it's super handy when I can't find a good reference on the internet. Seriously, I might just like stick these in the figurines to do some figure studies and learn muscle anatomy with them. So for that, I feel like I'm gonna have to do the exercises that Proko asked his students to do and do the digital tracings, um, which will help in the long run. Um, Bodhikun is useful in capturing the gesture of the pose, however he isn't very useful in depicting muscle mass and joint structure. Given it's a poseable figure slash mannequin, you can imagine that in order for it to function as intended, there has to be space for the flexible joints to bend, move, and rotate accordingly to mimic what a, a real human body would. These are some limitations to the approach because of course there has to be some limitation when it comes to sort of, sort of things like this. But if I remember correctly, I think it took me about two or three additional layers after tracing the pose to get the body type correctly and to also draw the connecting tissues of the joints to look like a connected hole. For example, the armpit area is non-existing on body cone because of the shoulder joint. The same thing will be for the, re for the wrists, uh, knees, ankle joints, and also the joints where the leg connect to the hip. All of those areas have gaps to let the, the figure move, but when it comes to actually drawing it to be human with a tangible torso, then it turns into a completely different ballgame. I have to pull out um, my few how to draw anatomy books to figure out what that armpit area and groin area will look like. I also had to scout the countless of saved items in my bookmarks of, on my art blog for references and the Facebook page as well. Conceptually, I understood what a well-defined torso with developed muscles is supposed to look like, but when it came to drawing it, I really didn't know where the insertion points of muscles would be and such. I don't know, it's just, I feel like if some other experienced artists were to look at this drawing, they would definitely call me out on how exaggerated his latissimus dorsi looks like. Probably also call me out on how the armpit and triceps aren't really like that, but hey, it made sense for me. 
I'm also aware that it's not super accurate, but it looks good enough, at least to my standards. The abs were a bit more easier to render, given they were doing anything weird in the perspective. Then again, thank god for the anatomy book, since um, it also had a section on how abs protrude, protrude when flexed, and I think it makes sense when you're in the middle of a sit-up um, that your abs will activate, similar to the pose that Bakugo is in right now. And speaking of pose, I figured the pose will feel more like a T-scene Bakugo, though I shouldn't- I should have thought about the background first before deciding on the pose. Regardless, I think it makes more sense with him sitting on the edge of the bed against the wall or something of the sort. Given also his uh, lack of attire, for better words, um, I'll figure. I figured it would be best to just give it a low light situation. You know, when it's just dark enough for the moonlight sipping in through it through a window. Though I'm not sure if I'm the only one that sees a bit of texture when it comes to to like really dark rooms akin to visual noise i'm not sure if you guys know what i'm referring to but imagine seeing the tv static but when you're in pitch black darkness i'm not sure if that's something that i see or if other people experience something similar but i think it's fitting for the type of work that this thumbnail is going to be um accompanied with over at andrea's channel with the audio that it will be paired up with I knew that the pose was fitting, um, but I had different points where I was struggling with the piece. Um, I particularly reached a wall when I had gotten the pose down with, but without a face zoom. Like I knew the pose was fitting, but the next issue was to figure out what kind of face he will make at you. The goal of the thumbnail was to make it spicy, but I wasn't sure which kind of face, so I had to go through a process of trial and error, again with drawing different expressions. Would he be mad at you? Would he be flustered, aggressively inviting you for a closer look? That was basically a bit of the struggle. At least getting the eyes was a bit easier, but when it came down to the mouth, like, would he growl at you, yell, smirk? I didn't really know until I ended up stumbling onto the facial expression you guys see, and even I got weak. If you made it this far, then please mute me now. <laughs> My professionalism stops here. So if you don't want to hear me fangirling over him and anything else, then I just suggest not proceeding. From this point onwards, I would exclusively talk about Bakugo as a character and my ever-growing crush on him. If that's not something you feel comfortable hearing a girlfriend girling over a 2D man, then yeah, no, just do us a favor, just not listen onwards. You can put on your own music and enjoy the rest of the speed bait or whatever feels more comfortable. You have been advised and warned. Now, if you are cursed and actually want to hear me say what I'm going to say, then by all means, stay but just don't burn my house down this is just me fangirling okay okay cool let's proceed then my god i really did that wig i <laughs> my scalp is bleeding i cannot believe i actually dressed spicy bakugo i i look listen even my own knees buckled when my right side of the brain kicked in and registered his entire expression and pose for this thumbnail alone. Oh god, if he was only real so I could date him and get frisky. Also, can we like take a moment to appreciate him? Like this bitch over here, king of powerhousing and fucking shit up. Like, hello? Seeing him improve throughout the anime is great, especially taking into consideration his incredible battle sense in the second movie. Like, that entire movie was a fucking nut. Start to finish, the moment he show he shows up, it's just water noises. Like, that's it. That's it. That's the entire movie. It's water noises. Okamoto-san really be killing his vocal cords for him, but my god, do I want more. Like, this man, who gave him permission to wear a tank top casually and then show cleavage like that? Like... Like, his chest be so wide and cushioned, I... 
I would die just to be able to do things with him and do him. Jesus Christ, wig. Like, I do not care. I want him. I want him. But, um, now that I remembered, yeah, no, Bakugo's entire reason why I even started watching Boku no Hero Academia. And I blame Tumblr artists for before the Great Exodus happened. Like, they were making such good fan art of him before I even knew who the fuck he was and where he was from. Those feral drawings of him in cool outfits and doing edgy shit, mmm, mmm, it sends me. I wish I could go back to uh, the time where I was seeing that on my timeline and like go find the, the fan art to reblog, follow the artist and thoroughly die at just looking at the art that those Tumblr artists were making when Boku no Hero Academia just started. <sighs> then again, if I bottle up my incredible thirst for caramel over here, um, there are a lot of aspects to him that I resonate with. In some senses, that entire arc where he got kidnapped and feel responsible for ending All Might's career hits too close to home for me. My situation wasn't the same as his, but I can draw some parallels to his experience, and my experience is growing up too. Just like him, in a way, I also have a superiority inferiority complex when it comes to schooling. Um, up until I enter high school, I had some of the highest grades in my grade level, and despite being quote unquote weird and shunned, I did have a small group of friends who would stick to me because I would bitch at anyone who would bully them or me or do anything questionably rude. I would step in for them. I, I did not give a fuck. I was like, yo, stop that. That's not cool. And then I would get bitched at. But it, it was whatever. Um, I was so much more snappy and aggressive, but over the years I've definitely mellowed out. It wasn't until I entered high school and saw that there were a lot more people who were better than me that I really started to work harder and do my best to catch up to those people. Um, I came to how Bakugo sometimes feels when looking at his relationship to Deku and Doloroki. And that fear of being left behind because someone just magically became better than you it's so frustrating when you have been standing ahead of everybody else for a good majority of your time growing up. And yes, it's definitely a bright thing. Uh, but when you grow up hearing and believing that you are better than everybody else, with some evidence to support that idea, um, and hitting that wall, you definitely get insecure about yourself. I knowing that you can become better and are supposed to be better, coupled with working towards a goal that you really, really want and admire, and seeing all that coming crashing down, yeah, no, you'll feel absolutely responsible even if you don't have all the pieces to the puzzle to really know why it didn't work out. In my case, my GPA was not high enough to get full rights to the colleges of my choice. Meanwhile, a lot of my classmates got many, many grants that helped them, and others got full rights despite some of their GPAs and grades not being as high as mine. To put this in perspective, my class was super competitive. We were a graduating class of 89, and I was ranked third thing of my class. Our top 10 were the top 8 highest GPA. Sometimes differentiating between each other by a hundredth of a decimal that's a hundredth of a decimal that's literally not a lot but it was definitely a big gap for for those who were involved in the situation seeing them get full rights and knowing that their parents were gonna let them like leave out of the state while my choice of school only granted me a third of a tuition with no other grants hurt i cried so fucking bitterly when my parents wouldn't let me go to my choice of school despite me wanting to take loans out just like live my dream. In Bakugo's situation, seeing that he wasn't the top of the cream anymore was having his inspiration of a hero come and save him and having to retire because of his fight to protect him wore him down so much and sustained so many injuries, injuries to secure his future. Yeah, no, it's just heartbreaking. Like that entire arc broke me. And to be fair, having that ever inquisitive, increasing, <laughs> and to be fair, having that ever increasing, increasing competitive flair, um, 
that he has is something I dearly, dearly miss from my high school days. Even if it wasn't always the kindest approach. Banda, if you're listening, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Regardless though, Bakugo isn't always a rude bad boy. He can actually think for the benefit of the whole group. He just won't admit it openly because he doesn't want to let himself be seen as vulnerable or dependent on anyone. And it's part of that insecurity that you aren't good enough or strong enough to do things independently. And knowing his ass, yeah, I get like that too. Like, it's literally the same thing. He just isn't your typical bad boy though. Uh, He's incredibly smart and has a better sleeping schedule than I do for sure. In a way, it's kind of endearing seeing how he tells everything and everyone he doesn't like to fuck off. Because god do I want to do that so badly sometimes. And just be by myself doing my own thing without interruptions. Plus the man can cook and is a total beast at the drums. Like he is the entire fucking restaurant packaged in one of those misleading non-spicy chips. But in truth everyone is lying to you. Those chips are hella fucking spicy but you just sit there suffering, dying at the burning sensation of your mouth because you just love the taste. You just hate the fact that they're, that they're spicy. God, I love you so much, Caramel. Oh yeah, and I affectionately nicknamed him Caramel just because of this post a while back I saw uh, that was analyzing his quirk. Apparently, nitroglycerin smells like burnt caramel if it explodes. And knowing how Bakugo's quirk works, yeah, no, I would not mind hanging out with him sweating, working out, and training. Like, being able to interact with him would be nice, although if I really had to be there to study, it probably would get annoying giving his your typical asshole who is interrupting you. Um, who's interrupting you or doing something. Like, if he actually was like your your typical um, asshole who's interrupting you and pick on you just to get a reaction out of you, doesn't make sense to me. Like, for whatever res- reason, I see a lot of people depicting Bakugo as a bully while in class. Like, while the class is in session, and I'm just like, question mark? Like, that doesn't make sense to me given the school etiquette for Japan. If anything, he will be a bully during breaks or in between periods, but I don't see why I wouldn't push back and such. I myself have done it despite making it worse, um, but I wouldn't let it get out of hand. Like, I wouldn't mind throwing hands, but it could turn into those enemies to mutual res- respect to friends to ultimately lovers. I don't know, I think it would be nice. Oh yeah, and speaking of uh, that, my best friend finally convinced me to... Uh, make a self-insert OC a while, a while back just to date a Bakugo in roleplaying. God, do I not regret it one bit. Granted, I hesitated a lot on the idea simply because uh, I've seen very cringy self-inserts in the roleplay community over the years and quite frankly, that turned me off to the idea until I myself tried it and it was eye-opening. Then again, I'm a grown, <sighs> full adult. And it's definitely easier to write characters with relatable human flaws. So yeah, no, making Mitsuri as a self-insert is always a blessing. And now I thoroughly enjoy drawing her. Well, technically it's me, but yeah, by extension, I'm just drawing self-portraits. Regardless though, if I could deadass marry Bakugo and have kids with him, I would do it. Like, I do not care. I would hands down do it. (laughs) Anyway... If you like what you see, then please free, feel free to leave a comment or share it with your friends. Spreading you the word around helps me a lot in the long run. And if you wish to support me further, then please follow my social media accounts and consider uh, making a pledge over at my Patreon page. We have pledges as little as a dollar a month with perks such as getting updates on the timeline of my personal projects, interacting with me with a small but growing discord server, discounts on commissions and first dibs on commission slots, and um, other goodies and other plans that I plan on letting my patrons know. Uh, I can tell like getting to know my OCs in a little bit deeper level and um, other announcements that are brewing in the back. I- I'm thinking about ideas. Then again, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys 
in the next one. Yay!